Hi guys, it's Sophie and this is the second half of my October and November wrap up. So in the first half of the video I went through seven or so of the books I'd read and in this half I'm going to go through the remainder of those books. Okay, so the first book I read was The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. Uh, this is a sort of novel told in vignettes about a girl growing up in the Latino district of Chicago um, and it's a pretty pretty sort of poor area um, and sort of it sort of goes through her life and experiencing what she feels as she's living in this area and around the location and also her heritage and really the feelings of what she would consider to be sort of the outside world towards these people who are living in this particular district. It's very strong in terms of place and in terms of sort of expressing really what, what this young girl felt. I think it's a really, really incredible novel actually. I, as you can see I sort of marked it up. There are places where I started reading and just thought mm, it's quite a simplistic style, um, maybe not my kind of thing, but there were just little twists and turns of phrase and little ideas that were peppered through that were really interesting. I understand that when I hauled this people said that this was a standard text in American schools and I can certainly see why. I think it's massively interesting and just a really nice way of telling a story that's difficult to tell. Um, it can be hard sometimes to hear about how other people's lives can can just suck or, or that without even meaning to you can you can be sort of putting someone else down. I think that's hard to know and it's hard to hear. I think it just tells it so beautifully and in such a relatable manner that yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend that you pick this one up if you if you are sort of interested in learning about about this particular area of culture or just in general about what sort of marginalised peoples might feel. I did give this one five out of five stars. Okay, and the next book I read I had problems with. It's called Green Girl by Kate Zambrino. Beautiful book though, right? Like horrible but beautiful. I think that's pretty much the theme. <laughs> um, this is a book about being a woman and how horrendous it is and how everything you do is, is horrid and nasty and superficial and transient and that you really shouldn't bother anyway because it's all so much work and it's not worth it and everything's awful. I had a big problem with that. I think that it, this book has a place but I'm not sure it has a place on my shelves. I, I think I'm far more positive about women than, than this book is. I understand what it was doing. I understand that it was a really bleak depiction of femininity and I think a really honest depiction of what some parts of femininity are like, particularly the sort of capitalism of, of femininity. Um, but I really had issue with it. This is going to be one of those books that I will promise myself I won't read again, which probably means I will read it again. <laughs> I give it two out of five stars, but as a book it's worth more than that. Um, I can tell you that, but I couldn't give myself permission to rate it higher than that because I just don't agree with some of the fundamental messages. I, I don't agree that, that female sexuality and female values are, are packaged and sold. I don't think that's true and I don't think it's all that useful to highlight it to this extent. Um, that's enough of that one. <laughs> I'm gonna get cross otherwise. <laughs> so the next feminist book I read was very short, um, but a fair amount happier it is We Should All Be Feminist by Chimanda Ngozi Adechi. I read this in one sitting, um, very easy to read through and just a really nice little sort of text on feminism. I think it's the kind of thing that I would give someone as like a stocking filler or, or just like a little gift. Um, I think it's a gorgeous little book for one thing, I think it's stunning. Um, it's got some really nice stuff in there, some really nice ideas and, and well sort of worded. It wasn't something that taught me a great deal but it was interesting to read nevertheless. I did give it five out of five stars. And then the next book I read was Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. I'm going to say something about this book that I don't like saying about very many things. I didn't get it. Um, not that I didn't understand, you know, the message. I didn't understand. There were so many things in here that were really academic and beyond me. I hate saying that, but it's completely true. I couldn't give it more than 3 out of 5 stars. I couldn't give it less than 3 out of 5 stars. I really don't feel as though I know enough about feminism and enough about the topics she's speaking about to honestly review this for you. Go away and read it if you're interested in things. I know lots of people have thought this is brilliant. I am not either intelligent or knowledgeable enough to quite understand what's going on in this book. 
Okay, and the next one, I did understand this one. <laughs> it's The Grace Keepers by Kirstie Logan. Um, a lot of people have raved and ranted about this book and just fallen in love with it. I'm, I'm not one of those people. I liked it, just I didn't think it was that special. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I think there's some nice imagery in there. Um, potentially a little bit too reliant on the imagery and on her skill there rather than on the sort of plot points and I did feel it lacked a little bit in terms of in terms of plot though there was always lots going on it just I didn't really feel as though it had something driving behind it it's interesting and I would be interested in reading more from her because I think that she has she clearly has skill in terms of how she's writing I just don't think she quite knows what to do with it yet she built the world beautifully and wonderfully um, and it is essentially about sort of this odd circus um, that lives on the sea and about the divide between those who live on the sea and the land and about a girl who is something called a grace keeper um, who essentially it, it serves the purpose of sort of a grave escorter, it's hard to explain. Essentially she, she looks after dead bodies for those who bring them in from the sea and ensures they're put to rest properly. Uh, it was interesting, it just I, I don't think it was as good as everyone else thought it was, or potentially they saw something different in it to me. And the next book was one that I not only don't have a copy of, but I didn't technically read it, so that's fun. Um, it was The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, and I was actually read this story, uh, but I, it's on my Goodreads, so therefore it is, it is being told to you. Um, I really liked it! I thought it was creepy, I sort of found myself, like, a little, genuinely a little bit nervous um, throughout the story and it was very odd. It very much sort of builds on tension and, and builds on the fear of the unknown, which I like. Essentially you have a situation in which you've got a towns, a sort of townspeople who are sitting around determining this lottery, but you don't really know what for. It feels kind of creepy and weird to start with and as it goes on it just gets creepier and weirder. It was great fun. Um, only a tiny little thing but if you fancy reading that side of thing then certainly do. The next book I read I can't talk to you about yet because I have a separate video that's going to go on for, for that book and another one um, that I can't talk to you about yet but there are two more in here so just be aware <laughs> there'll be a video coming soon. So the next one I'm allowed to talk to you about is For Adults Only by Beverly Nichols. I went to Edinburgh for a while and I saw this book and I am a child and if something says for adults only then I want it. Uh, it was brilliant, it's great fun, it's unfortunately out of print um, so yeah, if you can find it then get hold of it but I, it, great fun. It's about a really obnoxious child and their parents and the child asking all those questions that when you're an adult you don't want to honestly answer to children like why do people, why do people kiss in films or why is he biting her ear in a film? Why? She said she liked him. Why is he biting her? Great fun. Made me giggle and really just chilled me out. Um, so sort of just a really fun, light, light reads. And I think I will go back and just go over these short stories again. They were just mildly entertaining. Um, but great fun. Four out of five stars. And then the second to last one I have is graphic novel. It's The Wicked and the Divine by Gillian McKeevy and Wilson Cowles. And I think Gillian McKeevy is the writer and Wilson Cowles is the illustrator but please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is the second instalment in the Wicked and the Divine series, um, so I think it's a six, volume 6 to 10 of the comic series, in a sort of bind up. Um, artwork is as it was for the first one, great fun, really different, really nice, gorgeous full page spreads of the characters. Uh, but the plot sucked! <laughs> um, yeah, I thought when I read the first one, I'll know a little bit more about the characters when I read the second one and I'll, I'll you know, I'll understand a little more about what, what's happening and that didn't happen. Um, it only got worse. It got more complicated. I don't think that the dialogue was terribly clear. I don't think that the scene changes were terribly clear. And I just think they, they, they it's beautiful. And the story has such potential, but I just don't think they're using it correctly yet. <laughs> How pretentious does that make me sound? I just... Uh, I felt as though they're really missing an opportunity here. I think if they made the panels clearer and potentially if they just added a little bit into each scene or some kind of scene splitter, I would be so much happier with this entire series. I don't know if any of you have read this and thought similar things or whether I'm just 
alone in, in feeling it but it kind of spoiled it for me because it meant I was having to work really quite hard trying to figure out what what did I miss and think kept thinking I missed pages when I hadn't I'd changed scene or I'd changed time and it was one very subtle thing that would have indicated that to you um, that's not really what I'm looking for when I read a graphic novel sorry guys and then the very last book I read was Jellyfish by Janice Galloway picked this one up in Edinburgh as well and just basically on a whim it's gorgeous I think I heard Jen Campbell talk about it but I, I don't know it's a very recent publication um, so it would make sense. I know Jen Campbell tends to talk about things that are sort of relatively new new releases. It's a collection of short stories and it is wonderful. Um, someone asked me for a recommendation on my video a few days ago I think and I recommended this one sort of without hesitation. This is going to be my standard recommended book I think for the next few weeks at least. They are very intense short stories sort of surrounding parenthood and children and and the alternatives to children um, they're really about sort of growing up and what happens if you if you were to start a family what happens if you don't and what is modern life actually like if you do have children or you don't and how does it affect the way you live and they're gorgeous stories there were some pieces in here that just completely stopped me dead like pieces of writing and description that I was like oh my god goodness this is incredible I just loved it um, I didn't unfortunately have a pen on me or this would be another copy of a book that would be completely scribbled on but just some absolutely stunning turns of phrase there's one particular story in here that really horrified me and it's beautifully written but horrifying about a mother who is very unwell and um, she has paranoid schizophrenia and she kills her children um, unfortunately in, in the midst of this, of this illness. It's based on her true story and a newspaper article she read and she tells the story of this mother um, doing the gardening with her children around her dead. Oh my goodness it was horrifying but the writing was absolutely gorgeous. I had a couple of times where I did literally just stop and read the sentences again. Obviously I've given it a five out of five stars. If you enjoy short stories please go and read this. I would very much recommend that you, you hop on this one whilst it's still nice and fresh and you can get a cool shiny cover. So I didn't have an overly productive couple of reading months. Um, I read 15 books in total in October and November but I feel as though that's fine. I think I read a fair amount of those books in October and then only read a couple really in November because I was so wrapped up in NaNoWriMo. As I say, there are actually two more, so it is 17, but still. Um, I read some really interesting books this month. I read, I think, well, last two months, I read quite a mix of books, and I've quite enjoyed doing that. I don't tend to read so many essay collections or essays in general. I go through phases with them. Um, and I really like mixing the poetry in, too. I think I'm going to try and do that in the months going forward, in, in terms of what I buy and what I read, and trying to mix genres a little bit more. Whilst I do just love indulging in a great big novel it, it has been good fun to be reading those shorter books and those books are a little bit different. So with all that said hopefully you have had a wonderful reading month or months or whatever it is that you are doing um, and you're looking forward to reading some lovely books up to Christmas which is mental. Um, I'll do a TBR video for December shortly. I've got loads of stuff I'm really excited to read so hopping into that one at some point soon. I'll see you then, look after yourselves, bye bye.